Hello and welcome back to the Villa View for a match preview for Wednesday's game. We're playing Nottingham Forest, a little bit of a different setup. I'm sat at my desk for this one. Uh, Dan, unfortunately, didn't have enough time to record it. It's uh, been a bit of an impromptu recording session. So I've got James Rushton on the phone with me at the moment. So James, you want to say hello? Yeah, hello. Uh, good to be back, guys, uh, especially after beating Blues. So because this is a bit of a, a late minute a last minute recording session I've done absolutely no notes or research I know that Forest are the place above us three points ahead so we can catch up to them but first James talk a little bit about the Birmingham game briefly obviously we've done our own video on it so we won't we won't touch on it too much but your thoughts four two <laughs> what a day yeah it was a great day a great spectacle um Villa really didn't play well I didn't kick on at all and it took a, a massive concussive blow from a Lucas Jutkovic uh, up front for Birmingham City, um, big boxing frame, and he delivered that knockout blow. It sent Villa Park silent. I was gutted. I've never been yeah. so gutted by a goal. And then uh, Che Adams got through on, hit the post. I mean, it's off target, mate. Um, you know, hitting the post is just an off target shot with a bang, in all honesty. <laughs> and it's not, it hasn't gone in. And it, it counts as an off target shot. But what a wake up call. Within two minutes of that, Villa yeah. scored once, then twice with Jack Grealish, of course, grabbing that really emotional goal that he dedicated to his late brother really special goal one we've all been waiting for and it felt like yeah. it was destiny so that that came along came along nicely then the penalty amazing and of course man that alan hutton goal uh maradona-esque i <laughs> uh, can't get that out of my head amazing stuff and um, surely has cemented his place as somewhat of a villa legend at the very least a cult hero uh in my eyes so yeah amazing game villa didn't play well so a lot to learn from that and take forward because yeah. Nottingham forest who will be playing there they're all right. When me, and, when me and Dan did our video, we sort we didn't obviously we didn't know what Dean Smith had said at that point. But I sort of almost joked that Hoel probably have thought we were average, and that almost what he said in his post match interview that we weren't that good today, and there was improvement to be had. And I mean, you look at it on the face of it, if there's improvement to be made after a four two derby win, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Um, I think Villa really did put in a five out of ten performance, and uh, the stats just show how bad Blues were. I think it took them. The whole game to complete like just over 60 passes or yeah. 80 or 90 or something and Villa had done that I think they'd met that within 20 minutes of the game or something stupid like that so it showed Villa's dominance I think they had about 80 percent if not that uh 75 percent possession uh so it was close yeah, and complete domination yeah. of that game uh incredible stuff and especially in the derby and it was ferocious I, I think it went underrated as one of the most hard-hitting derbies there were some meaty tackles flying in i think alan hutton could have got sent off late on yeah and, uh, wes hardings should have <laughs> definitely walked for that challenge on a, a domer that left him it took him out of the game oh. so yeah both sides really did put in some meaty tackles and i think it yeah. uh, really lived up to the name um second city derby to be proud of but it's a uh, villa that walk away with the points and the bragging rights, as they always do these days. Considering we didn't play that well, how how do you think that will affect us going into this game Wednesday now, another home game in quick succession? Obviously, the fans and, and everyone around the club are obviously on a high, but if the manager's going, OK, we didn't play that well, there's improvements to be made. How do What sort of mentality do you expect us to go with for Wednesday night's game now? Are we going to be all out again, or will, we, or will we sort of almost be worn out a little bit from Derby Day? Uh, I think there'll definitely be uh, some tired legs. Uh, you know, that's part and parcel of the championship, though or that's a championship for you, I guess, as a former <laughs> boss would say. Uh, but I think it's it's rather contradictory for me to say, but I think I'd rather us have things to work on than not to work on, because I think yeah, it's a project, it's still in building it. And these flaws and bad performances, even losses are valuable to Dean Smith Villa because they analyse. Um, it's certainly clear in our manager and his coaching team, you know, uh, O'Kelly and, and Terry, that they analyse this stuff. They use the video yeah. footage a lot more. And they did, don't get me wrong, Villa have always done that. They've done that for a while. We've been quite analytical in our mindset and approach for a long time. It's just maybe the managers haven't taken that much from it. But I think Dean Smith, it's very much the basis of his philosophy at Villa. And we we are showing, we will show the players what's went wrong. We won't necessarily linger on what's went right because when it goes right, that's what should have happened anyway. It's yeah. pointless looking at. And when it goes wrong, that's where stuff can be fixed. And that is so much more important to Villa than just um, a pat on the back. I noticed that Neil Cutler came out on out into the dugout for every set piece that we had as well, for every defensive set piece, and shouting orders to obviously, I presume, the keeper and, and an organisation and stuff like that. And they've all got their little, their little ear pieces in talking to each other. So it's just another another little addition, isn't it? A, a, a guy comes in like that as a goalkeeper coach, but you've got someone there who's now looking at set pieces as well. And, and that, that those little sort of things, especially in a derby game when Birmingham's sort of bread and butter, if you like, is going to be targeting set pieces in a game like that. To just know that, that we've got the coaches there that 
sort of know what they're doing is a nice thing to look at whereas you thought you almost thought before and, and years gone by what do they do in training and now we can see what they do and we can see the the benefits of that yeah absolutely and um, Villa are a horrible team at set pieces especially defending them I think that scoring them uh, Connor Hohan makes a name for himself there yeah. Jack Grealish seems to be getting better and John McGinn of course um, but at defending I think we're atro- we're atrocious at dealing with set pieces as we saw for that first goal uh, where Blue where Blue scored and took the lead I think uh, we do need some work there and it looks like Neil Cutler's the right man um, as you said, coming out onto the dugout and taking complete control of that situation. It's something we'll benefit from going forward because I think we are a, a nervy team at set pieces. I don't think Forrest are that much better, um, but we're definitely taking the crown for a team that uh, seems to be letting in these set pieces more often than not. Yeah, let's let's move on to Forrest then. So, as I said, another game at Villa Park, which is always nice to look forward to. It's, it's another team that's you know right next to us in the table, close on points, just like Birmingham was. It's another big game. The one you can look at is the Wolves victory last year and then the following QPR game. Have we put so much into Birmingham that we're going to do a QPR against Forest on Wednesday? I almost sort of, I was thinking about this before and I almost feel like we only really put it in against Birmingham for 60 minutes, maybe even only 45 in the second half. We were nowhere near it for the first 30. Is it that we didn't put in as much against Birmingham so we won't and maybe the, this whole setup will not allow us to put in a performance like that after such a great win but the the fear in the back of your mind is have we done too much to get that win against Birmingham that will now suffer going forward because of it yeah I think especially if you look at individuals like James Chester uh, James Chester clearly one yeah. of our best players who was nowhere clearly near, not fit yeah nowhere near good enough against Birmingham City and that's more so on his injury and his mobility issues that he suffered because of that injury I believe to his knee so every movement is going to be genuine pain for him yeah um, we're, we're asking a lot of him to play on Wednesday and play again on Saturday and I think um, it could be a genuine issue where we ruin uh, one of our players in the short term uh, just so we can get for the next few games is it work how can we drop James Chester we have not got we haven't got the depth to do that um, it yeah, so I think Yedinak's injured as well now yeah Yedinak's injured so you and Micah Richards is out to chronic injuries you know uh, rumoured arthritis of the knee so he's never playing again for Aston Villa and he's no. probably our third choice centre back at the moment. One player that I'd almost certainly rule out is obviously we don't know at this point. One player that I'd expect not to play is Albert Doma, who was piggybacked <laughs> off down the tunnel. It looks like a, a, a really bad injury. I don't know what quite it was. They only looked at the bench and think, well, Yannick Balassi probably plays, and it's not a, a half bad substitute to bring on, is it? Uh, no, Yannick Balassi certainly, I believe, could be in line for his, uh, I think it would be his first start. And uh, yeah. we shouldn't discount, of course. Uh, Ahmed al Mohamedi, who hasn't done badly at all this season. He just hasn't found the space to start or be brought on. Um, Adoma, I think, has been very unlucky. I think he's still one of our you know, best wingers. Um, it just hasn't come off for him at all. I think he's still getting in the same positions and creating shots of a high value. But they're not coming off at all. Uh, eventually, you know, yeah. averages do dictate if you keep doing the right thing, the right thing should happen. It just hasn't happened for him this season, but he did put in two incredible assists against Birmingham. That shouldn't be forgotten. Um, a lot of the reason why we managed to get back into the game and uh, take the lead is, of course, because of his efforts uh, in setting up Kodja and Jack Grealish. So, yeah, I think he'll be a huge miss, actually. Uh, it, he's coming for a bit of stick this season and it's not been totally un- un- unwarranted. I just feel that uh, he's just been totally unlucky. Totally totally yeah. unlucky and uh, the shots he was putting in last season he's doing the same work they're just not going in this season uh, so very unfortunate for Albert Adoma who I think has been doing all the right things except uh, having that little bit of luck let's try and pick a team then I almost feel like I need to load up the computer and, <laughs> and have a look at it all but obviously Neil in goal Chester plays so Hutton stays right back I think the whole back four stays as it is unless Chester is nowhere near which I mean I, I can't see it um, midfield, John McGinn maybe, is he ready to come back yet? Will, will we hold off till Borough for him to return? I, again, we don't know at this point. Henry Lansbury is not an option. He's, he came on and went off again within 10 minutes. So I think the team pretty much picks itself, doesn't it? I, don't, I can't see us making changes for changes' sake. Uh, yeah, I feel like definitely it 100% picks itself. Um, Filler have got some difficulties in their depth now. It seems like their depth has all, almost all yeah. but left them. I think it was a brave decision to bring uh, Callum O'Hare in. I don't know if he played against the under-23s at all. The other day, I can't actually find a team list. I, I don't think so. Um, so that definitely, in my mind, puts him in contention for a uh, 
a squad place at the very least. Um, if Filler want to risk it, yeah, I don't cause... think it'd be that risky to actually put him in Grealish's position and uh, just ask that he do less defensively because Jack Grealish is capable of dropping deeper. Talk to me about Forrest a little bit then because I know that you've done your research and I haven't. <laughs> Obviously, Lewis Graven returns at ex um, decent, Decent enough player. I've always remember the playoff performance there and him not really seeming that bothered, just sort of trotting around, not really doing a lot, but yeah, scored some, some important goals for us, so he's returning to Villa Park and we'll see what sort of reception he gets, but Forrest as a whole, what, am I, what should I expect on Wednesday? It's an Ato Karanka side, so it's a bit Benitez, a bit Mourinho, it's a lot of, you know, a strong, you know, never set, he'll never move from his philosophy, I don't think he is very adaptive, um, he'll, go, he'll go down with a ship, so to speak. Um, I've, it's it's structured, um, uses the flanks like most championship sides. And interestingly, it's got a good blend of some high profile transfers, you know, Cavalia uh, in that 10, that 10 position behind the striker, blended with some championship championship experience, like in, a, of course, Graben, uh, Claudio Jacob, Danny Fox, Costa Pantilleman, Jack Colback, you know, those names that they've been around this league a few times. And, uh, and you're saying those names, though, none of them scream out to me as like, "Oh, I need to be worried." No, not, about not those. necessarily worried, but um, it's it's just the blend. And um, he's brought in, of course, I've had the uh, Mendes link this season. They've been a yeah. Uncle George's favourite side this season, and because Wolves have moved up to the Premier League, it seems like uh, they've invested heavily in uh, his agency, and they've seen a few players move across from Portugal and Europe, um, including Cavalier. Uh, I don't know if he's kicked on that much this season. I haven't really been following them. I feel like the big name for them is uh, the the two players really kicking on, apart from Graben, seem to be Joe Lolly, who's a Villa fan, and Matty Cash yeah. on the wings. Uh, Joe Lolly is their second top scorer with five goals behind Graben with 10. So I think Graben, Lolly, and Matty Cash and is that front three is something to worry about. You know, I don't want to see Villa get, get run, what, dragged over all over the pitch by them run ragged so to speak yeah well I mean you always look at these these fixtures and you sort of we try and give our best thoughts on, on opposition teams and stuff but like, you look at their opposition front three and go okay well that could do us that could do us some problems but then you look at ours and go well Abraham Balassi and Kodja yeah, I, I, yeah. Is probably enough to play play in most Premier League sides as a front three so in the championship they'll be looking at us going there's a lot to worry about there as well oh yeah for sure I think the form the form does seem to fall with Forrest, uh, especially Lolly, but you can't look past the strength of ours. Abraham against Graben, I think, you know, for me, there's no question. I know he hasn't scored yeah. as much as uh, Graben this season, but Graben's known for that at this level. And Abraham certainly has a, a number of years of uh, high quality ahead of him. But I put them together, I take Abraham. I put Lolly and Kodja. I don't know with Lolly and Kodja. Um, but certainly Cash and Balassi, there's no question I'd take uh, Balassi. But uh, Joe Lolly would strike to me as the one player I'd, I'd swap over. We'll end with our predictions because I don't want to go on too long and I'm sort of running out of time at this point as well. Um, I'll let you go first and as you uh, kindly stepped in as the guest for tonight's show. I will say it will be 2-0 to Aston Villa. I think Villa will hold a good clean sheet. I think all your Nylon's developing with each game. I think he's getting a lot stronger and a lot more confident. I think if Villa were to fall short, it would be because their defence runs out of steam or he's uh, run a bit ragged on those wings and up front, especially uh, the, through that battling Lewis Graben, who, who does put him away at this level, no matter who he's playing against. Um, so I will go for 2-0 because I think Villa are, are far... They'll, they'll control the game and uh, they'll seem to get the better of Karanka's side as they did last season. Yeah, I pretty much agree as well with, with what you're saying. I think the defence is, is the only concern w- with us. Um, if Chester somehow doesn't play or if he's as sloppy as he was the other night, Tom Zabia as well, I think has been sloppy in, in a couple of games. Um, Alan Hutton is probably due a mistake after that wonder goal. <laughs> so, you know, any, anything can happen with, with the defence. It's just had such a high-intensity game. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go 2-1 Villa. I can't see us keeping a clean sheet. Uh, for some reason, but I mean, I'd absolutely take the three points if you offered them me now. So I don't care how it comes. Yeah, I mean, uh, it'll be a massive win for Villa. It'll be a real six pointer at this stage, I feel. Because if yeah. uh, Villa lose, they've always, you know, they will make that game up over Forest at some point, but it's just another game they'll have to make up. Uh, they've already lost a few this season. Uh, so, uh, oh, it's back Villa at home as well. Yeah, a good a good result will do Villa so good. You know, I think if you're looking at Villa to finish top two, they can lose something. They've only got five more games they can lose this season or something stupid like that. So the pressure is actually quite 
on for us and you wouldn't want to lose this game with so many other important ones coming up you know West Brom Stoke Leeds Borough on, Borough Saturday. on Saturday if you're talking lose five games you can only lose five more games if you want to get top two in the average championship season those five games could be you very well be coming up this month <laughs> so yeah yeah in the next month sorry so uh yeah uh it's one i really don't think villa can afford to lose especially with the slate of fixtures coming up they'll have to make up all this uh work in the new year if they are to and uh that could you know promotion could very much slip away from them this early if they're uh very unfortunate and don't perform as well as we know as they can well i think that'll do it james thanks very much for stepping in last minute i know i've uh, asked a lot of you to off me all your notes as well so thanks for that <laughs> it's no it's no worries uh, i've had to uh, really get it together and uh make my written preview up in uh, 20 minutes just to uh help you out <laughs> so it's been a, a bit of a struggle to actually uh, do forest any justice and i know the opposition fans <laughs> do listen to these uh so i'm gonna step right out and apologize i wouldn't normally do it but i do like uh not and forest i do have a soft spot for them because uh like us uh they've won that european cup james has done a written article which obviously isn't out yet but will be by the time this video goes out i think that's right isn't it so i'll put that uh, link in the description as well if you want to go and read a little bit more about James's thoughts um, if you enjoyed this video leave a like all the usual stuff subscribe to the channel I think we're close to 13 and a half thousand now which is which is great um, if you haven't seen the Birmingham City content yet I highly recommend you go back and watch it the fan cameras was carnage as you'd expect uh, but a really good watch and me and Dan did a post-match analysis uh, chat as well I've seen a few people say that they'd like to just do it all the time but it was partly time dependent Obviously, the early kickoff helped us, and I almost sort of felt like fan cams wasn't like that strong because we didn't speak to people for long because people just kept jumping in, shouting, shouting stuff. So I wanted to do a bit of an extra video. So yeah, go back and watch both of those. Here's to three points to Villa tomorrow, and uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another one? Click one of the video options on screen now, and if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.